Hi everyone, thank you so much for coming. I'm so honored to be here speaking tonight and thank you so much for having me. When I first sat down to figure out exactly what I wanted to talk to you about tonight in the realm of design related topics, I came up with several ideas and then started to wind my way through them. In the end, I decided that my first thought for a design topic was actually the most worthwhile. I think the topic I chose to speak about is especially worthwhile to students and to designers that are just starting out in the industry. I am an interior designer by trade, but I think that overall, as creatives, we're really all alike more than we are different. The way we think about things, the way we approach a problem, as creatives, we look at the world in a similar way. So whether you're designing interiors or graphics or clothing or anything else, design is something that defines us as creatives. It creates a bond between us, an understanding, if you will, of the way the world looks from our eyes. And in the decade that I've been practicing design, I have found that design as a whole and being in a creative industry has taught me so many lessons. Some were easy and came smoothly. Other lessons burst into my life and career and showed me that a creative profession is often hard and relentless but yet ever so fulfilling at the same time. I've spent long nights working with a team to finish up a project for a deadline, only to get up a couple hours of sleep, wake up and do it all over again. I've sat on countless airplanes in tiny economy seats trying to get as much work done as possible before landing and running to a client meeting. I've been told no more times than I can count only to then work that much harder to make that a yes the next time around. And yet, in all the frustration and the stress and the long, long days, I wouldn't trade the path I picked as a creative for anything. Because honestly, if you're going into a design profession, most likely you're not going into it for the money or the fame or any number of other things that another path might offer. I hope you all, like myself, are going into it for the love you have of creating, plain and simple. In my 10 years in a creative profession as an interior designer, five really key lessons have come my way along my journey as a designer. And I wanna share those lessons with you tonight. Not that your lessons will be the same or that your path will be the same as mine, but I share them to offer an insight into the windy journey I've taken and in hopes that some of them might ring true for all of you as well. Before we get into those lessons though, you might be wondering who I am and what I do and why any of what I'm saying actually matters. I'm Casey. I was born in Dammam, Saudi Arabia. My parents were teachers for Aramco, the large oil company in Saudi, and they had been living abroad for several years before I was born there. We lived on an international compound right on the Arabian Gulf and I spent a pretty idyllic 12 years there as a kid with my family. On weekends, we'd explore areas in Saudi like desert fortresses and go sledding on sand dunes. And as cliche as that sounds, it really did happen. On holidays, we'd travel to all sorts of exotic places like Cyprus and France and India. In short, my childhood abroad instilled in me a genuine love of travel and culture that is still very prevalent in my life today both in my career, which I'll get to in a moment, but also in my personal life. I'm a huge believer in taking every single vacation day I get every year to travel in the U.S. and abroad. Travel for me has always been about the pursuit of knowledge and inspiration and forcing yourself outside of your comfort zone. As a creative, I have found over the years that inspiration does not always just come freely. And there have been many times in my professional life when the ideas didn't just appear. It's then when I dig into my travels and the cultures that I've experienced. I find that travel and language and culture influence me perhaps more than anything else. And I have found that my experiences while traveling around the world are my greatest source of inspiration for my creativity and my creative process. My childhood in Saudi Arabia is often met with a lot of opinions. Some opinions are relevant to what I experienced in the Middle East, and some are just ignorant. But Saudi and the Middle East in general will always be a huge part of who I am and what I strive to do in my life daily. 
That part of my life also directly influenced the path I chose. And I strongly believe that as designers, a part of what we do is connecting other places and people together. We create spaces and moments for people, no matter where they come from or what language they speak, to interact, to connect. That for me will always be at the forefront of who I am as a designer and as a person. I wholeheartedly believe in inclusivity and I try to showcase that in both my life and in my designs. After my time in the Middle East, let's fast forward to my college years when I majored in interior design at the Art Institute of Portland, earning my bachelor's degree there. Upon graduation, as luck would have it, the recession was in full swing in the Pacific Northwest. No firms were hiring in Portland or Seattle or really anywhere, and in fact, hundreds of designers were being laid off. As a new graduate, I was one of only three other people in my graduating class that actually started a design job right out of school. And I credit that to being flexible from the get-go. Something that I have found has pushed me in my career and allowed me to do a number of different things as a designer. I actually ended up taking a job in Honolulu, Hawaii as a junior designer. And as romantic as that sounds, it actually was a huge leap of faith. It meant that my boyfriend at the time, now my husband, and I would be doing long distance as he had taken a job at a company here in Portland. It also meant I was upending the life that I had started in Portland, and I boarded that plane not sure what was on the other end. Looking back now, that leap of faith, and actually every leap of faith I've ever taken in my life, was beyond fulfilling. The path I set myself on when I said yes to that job has opened so many doors and offered so many opportunities that I never would have had had I stayed in Portland from the start, and I'm ever so thankful for that. At the time, Hawaii wasn't experiencing the recession as badly as the mainland, and actually, in any economic downturn, the island seemed to feel the slowing a lot later than the rest of the U.S. That, for me, was a godsend, because buildings were still being built in Hawaii at that time, when construction had basically halted everywhere else. And I threw myself into a new job to learn as much as I could. And I know you're learning a lot now as design students, but there is really no true way that you can be fully prepared for what it's like to just dive in and be a designer. It's truly exhilarating, but also terrifying. And I hope that a year from now or two years from now, when you're out there working, You'll remember that we all go through that period of time when you feel like your head is barely above the water. We're all just trying to figure it out as we go. So use that time when it comes to soak it all in because that's when you'll really find yourself and who you can be as a designer. I have worked for the past 10 years as an interior designer, working mostly on commercial projects with a few residential ones thrown in here and there. I have also managed many lead projects on sustainable buildings, designed interiors for new builds and renovations. I've done graphics and project management and construction oversight. In short, I've done a little bit of everything in the span of 10 years in the industry. As soon as I could build up the required number of hours to take my NCIDQ exam, I did, and have held that designation all these years. I am also a lead specialist with my lead AP designation in interior design and construction, of which became a sort of calling card of mine and led me to a lot of the work that I ended up doing over the past decade. Since I graduated from the Art Institute 10 and a half years ago, I have worked for that same architecture firm in Honolulu that I started out with. I have spent years working on several international projects through our sister company in Seoul, South Korea, and I also have my own design company where I work on smaller projects, mostly educational and commercial office interiors. In addition to my design work, I taught part-time at the Art Institute of Portland for four years until the school closed last December. Needless to say, I like being busy. When I went to put this presentation together, I found myself scrolling through hundreds of files on my computer, looking for which projects I wanted to highlight and show you, which ones feel the most like me as a designer, and which ones I'm most proud of. And in the moment when you're working on a handful of projects, you kind of forget how all of these projects are adding up to this huge portfolio of work. 
But when you go back through them later, like I did when I was creating this keynote, it's really fulfilling to look at these spaces that were nothing before I started working on them and ended up a completely new and different experience for the users. In 10 years with the architecture firm that I work for in Honolulu, I have worked on hundreds of projects. Some I've designed start to finish, some I've just consulted on, and some I've just done random tasks that needed to be done on the project. Each one has been completely different and each one brought with it new lessons and new information to learn. And before I get fully into the lessons that I've learned, one of the things I have found in my career that's allowed me to do a lot of different things is the ability to learn from every project and take those lessons on with me to the next. I started with the company as a junior designer, but in truth, my role grew really quickly within the firm. Within a few weeks of starting my job, the only other person in the firm who did all of the lead and sustainability documentation for every project in the office quit and left within a couple of weeks. I had recently gotten my lead GA and was studying for my lead AP when my boss came to me and said, we're going to have you be in charge of all of the lead projects in the office and all the documentation to get them certified through the USGBC. Talk about being thrown in the deep end. But I went with it, and to this day, almost all of the lead projects in our office in Honolulu and in Korea still all go through me. I vividly remember my first lead project. It was a school on the west side of Oahu in a rapidly growing area on the island. The school was pretty much designed and was just starting to be built when I began working for the firm, and our first design section of the lead documentation needed to be done immediately. That was before USGBC overhauled the documentation process, which is now all done online. But in that project, we had to collect all the documentation for all the credits from all the consultants on the project, architects, civil engineers, structural engineers, landscape people, contractors, and print everything off, hole punch everything, and put together an entire binder of all of the documentation. Talk about a waste of paper for a sustainable process, right? Long story short, the school was awarded as the first public school in Hawaii with a LEED Gold certification. I still think about that project often, and anytime I come to a point in my career when I feel like there's something I can't do, or something that's going to be really hard, or that I don't feel entirely comfortable with my abilities for the project, I think back to that moment that I sent in that LEED binder. Because I didn't know what I was doing entirely. But I spent hours researching and figuring out how to do the things that no one had ever taught me. I put in the time and I just figured it out. Since then, I've worked on numerous lead projects, both in Hawaii and in South Korea, including one at the moment that we're looking at possibly building to platinum, the highest level of lead. Unlike a lot of new design graduates, I didn't actually spend a lot of time doing CAD and picking up other designers' red lines. My path diverged early from what a typical designer does straight out of college, and I think that happened for a few different reasons. Something I learned early on was that while it said interior designer on my business card, in reality, I became a lot of different things in my daily work. When the firm was looking at designing new business cards, I offered to help and for many years did the graphics for that. When our design library needed a modernization and a clean out, I offered to do it on the weekend. In the years that I've worked for the company, I've done all sorts of things like renderings and graphics and planning and project management and lead. And while at some points I did miss certain aspects of daily life as just a designer, I think what my flexibility brought me was a more well-rounded education. I will always be the first to remind students to be flexible, and in each task that you do, learn something from it to make you better. That is something that a company will find extremely useful and will allow you to create your own path a lot faster in your professional life. During my time in Hawaii, I also have worked on several projects internationally in South Korea. Our company has a contract with the U.S. military there, and we are one of three companies that are awarded all of the military contracts in the country. 
I spent the first two years of my time with my firm traveling to Korea often and spent a lot of time on the ground there, working on various projects from dormitories to entry gates to schools. Pretty much anything that is required on a military base, we've done. My experience working on government projects is a whole other thing in general that I won't get too in-depth in here tonight. But overall, my international work allowed me to grow as a designer, learning to draw in millimeters and figure out ways to make a boring, cookie-cutter military floor plan come alive. I also was able to travel a lot as well for work, and spending time in South Korea truly brought back that love of travel that I had had as a kid abroad and reinforced all those feelings about culture and diversity that inspire me so much. Working in the firm, I've worked on projects for the University of Hawaii. I've worked on police stations and schools and offices. My work in the firm has been all over the board, which has given me a really great option to try almost everything. And while definitely not a traditional design route, when I took that leap of faith and moved to Hawaii, it allowed me to become much more of a designer than I ever could have had I taken a more conventional route. In addition to working for a large architecture firm, I also own my own design business. I started Reverie Design Studio nine years ago and have worked steadily since on projects every year for Reverie. In the beginning, I was finding by working for a large firm that small projects would come our way and the firm wouldn't really be interested in them because of how small they were. At the same time, I had also been doing some side work for a school client in Honolulu, helping them renovate small classrooms on a very limited budget, and I was offering my design services for free at the time, hoping to help hone my design skills and create some connections along the way. After a couple projects with them, they asked if I would be interested in doing some larger projects and that they would pay me for my design services and time. I figured at the time it would be good experience and it would create some good relationships, and I said yes. I created Reverie Design Studio honestly at the time just for tax purposes and to make sure that the money I was making from these small side projects would funnel through there and I would be prepared the next year for taxes and be somewhat legit. I never thought that I wanted to own my own business, and I never really even gave it a thought that the company would last very long. But life always has other plans for us. Nine years later, Reverie is one of the things that I am most proud of in my professional life. And just as my move to Hawaii was a leap of faith, my leap of faith opening Reverie has paid off immensely. In my work through Reverie, I found quickly that there was a large market of clients that needed design work done but couldn't afford to pay the big design firms to do it. And even if they could hook the design firms, usually the firms didn't have any interest in small, short projects because it didn't really make them money in the long run. I started designing for several schools on Oahu and started building relationships with clients and people in the community. In the nine years that Reverie has been up and running, I have worked on dozens of projects, focusing mostly on educational and commercial office spaces. The niche I fill in my projects with Reverie are my focus on color and furniture sourcing specifically. A hallmark of my spaces has become the interesting furniture choices and the bold and bright colors that are often achieved cheaply and easily through paint as schools are working on very limited budgets. I became very adept very early on at figuring out how to make the most of the budget and still create a lively space as well. One thing that I was able to achieve with Reverie that I somewhat missed out on at my firm was that start to finish connection with the client and the space. While I've worked on hundreds of projects with my architecture firm, very rarely, just due to the scale of the projects and the size of the teams, have I been in the very first meeting and in the very last walkthrough of the space. Usually I'll float in and out as needed in the project or come in at the beginning or at the end, but with Reverie, it was just me. I was the first meeting with the client and I was the last one walking through the finished space. And that was truly an incredible feeling and something that Reverie gave me that I might not have gotten otherwise. I specialize with my Reverie projects in working on pretty limited budgets as schools and small businesses don't often have a lot to spend on design. But I've become an expert at making every dollar count 
and creating beautiful and functional spaces regardless of what the budget is. I have learned that there is an art to taking what you want to design and changing it to make it fit the budget. And while a lot of designers have these grand ideas and amazing plans, all too often those grand ideas are prioritized over the whole of the design. My work with schools has taught me that the overall design and function of the space is more important than one incredible furniture piece or an insanely expensive piece of art. Design doesn't need to be complicated and it doesn't need to be expensive. And sometimes a coat of paint and a rearrange of existing furniture can work wonders. In my work on Reverie projects, I found that I sort of fell into educational design and it turned into something that I'm immensely passionate about, which leads me to those key lessons that my design career has taught me over the years. The first, be open. You don't know what you'll fall into, whether it be your personal or your professional life. My design career is not the one that I envisioned as a student or even as an early graduate. As a senior in college, I was sure I wanted to do hospitality design, hotels and restaurants and amazing high budget spaces. Instead, I fell into the type of design that is actually pretty much the opposite of hospitality. I fell into a career designing spaces that are generally low budget, must be ultra functional, and are meant for children to learn and excel. And I absolutely love it. It's great to have an idea of what you want to do, but in 10 years, the lesson that has played on repeat for me and keeps coming back around again and again is to be flexible, be open. Don't shut yourself off from something because you're unsure of it. The best moments of my life and my career have been the moments that I've jumped in the deep end when I didn't really know what I was doing, but I did it anyways. Design is best when you get out of your comfort zone. As creatives, we're best when we're open to any possibility. So be open to whatever comes your way. You never know what's around the corner and the opportunities that will present themselves that will make you a better designer. What is a good designer anyways? We're all aspiring to be a good designer, to be a successful creative. And while I think that definition is different for everyone, one thing that has allowed me to follow the path I wanted in my career was that I've always stuck to what I'm good at. Now, I'll be the first to tell you the things that I'm not good at. I'm not a crazy detail-oriented person. Organized, yes, but I'm much more about the whole of a project versus the tiny, minute details. I am not a perfectionist. I won't spend hours and days and weeks on one thing making sure it's perfect. I'm okay with 90%, and sometimes that has definitely been a downfall of mine. I'm also not a great codes person. I know general building code and I know the general process and the general rules, but it's not a great strength of mine and I rely on experts in that arena to help me. But what I am good at is making sure a project gets done on time and on budget. I'm good at building relationships with clients and making sure that what they want actually gets built. I'm good at knowing when to step away and how to solve problems when they arise. I've found over the years that playing to your strengths and knowing what you're good at will help you build a career that shows off those things. But also knowing when you need help and utilizing resources and other people in the industry to help you learn what you don't know because none of us know everything and none of us are amazing at everything. We always need a little help here and there. And that help will come from all sorts of places. And as young designers, it's vital to soak up as much information and assistance from anyone and everyone you meet and work with. You cannot create alone. I didn't really realize this in school and truthfully until I was actually working in the field as, as a designer. But as creatives, as designers, you can't create alone. Design and creativity may start in one person's mind, but you can't bring that vision to life without the help of others. Design is best when it's collaborative. Creativity and inspiration and vision are wonderful. But if you aren't prepared to work with other people, to listen to other people, then design is going to be hard for you. You can't create alone. 
One thing that has allowed me to do my very best work as a designer stems from building relationships with people in your design orbit. Over the years, I've formed relationships with mentors and clients and furniture dealers and design reps and contractors. Those relationships not only will allow my designs and my ideas to come to life, but they also allow you to create better. I've had several instances in projects over the years when those people and my relationships with them have literally saved entire projects. Like when I was designing a huge space for a partnership with the school in Honolulu and the Civil Air Patrol Division of the Air Force. And our opening party was scheduled, the rest of the building was done, and yet our brand new kitchen and cafe area where the party was taking place had no furniture because the tables we had ordered and had been promised would arrive on time didn't. The relationship I had created with my furniture rep was vital in that moment because she turned around after speaking with me, pushed her manufacturing team to push our order through, got it air shipped, which never happens to Hawaii and is crazy expensive, and installed just before the opening party. If I hadn't had a relationship with her, that wouldn't have happened, and my client wouldn't have been satisfied. I have so many stories like this, and it has often been due to my connections with the people in the industry that have made my projects successful. Those connections are vital in this profession. It's also important to remember that while my mind might come up with a design, I can't build it all myself. I can't create it all myself. And that's a good thing. Because when you let other people into that creative vision, when you allow your creative vision to be collaborative and open to discussion and hear other people's points of view, that's when your vision becomes something even more. We all draw inspiration from each other, even when we don't know we are. And in truth, no design is really unique anymore. Everything's been done. But what we can do is learn from each other and support each other as designers. We can offer suggestions to make design better. We can push each other to think outside the box and we can help each other when we need it. Design is always better when we design together. Imagine for a moment if the whole world really did design together. Imagine the problems that we could solve and the incredible change that design could do because design is also international. There is not one place in the world that design doesn't exist. There is not one place in the world that there aren't creatives creating. Imagine if we could all solve problems together and offer our insights together. There might be roughly 6,500 different languages spoken around the world, but design? Design is truly an international language. You could be in a space in Paris or in Tokyo, and you might not speak a word of French or have a clue what those Japanese characters mean, but the design around you doesn't need a translation. Design at its core is meant to be experienced. Good design communicates without words. It intrinsically speaks to you without language, without letters. And when design communicates to people that way, it becomes something more, and it unites us in a way that not many other things can. Everywhere in the world, design is part of culture. The styles might change, certain colors used more than others, different materials applied, but good design, that creative notion, that's truly universal and unites all of us. My time working in South Korea and my love of travel has showed me that design is one of the very few things that brings us all together. And in a world so desperately needing of that unity, every project I design, I bring with me that creative spark that I've picked up all over the world. My travels are without a doubt my greatest bank of design inspiration and where I've come up with my best and most creative ideas without a doubt. I truly believe as a creative that we must see the world around us. We must experience different things to really find out who we are as people and as designers. So my advice to you on this note would be to go out into the world when you get the chance and see it for yourself. Get outside of your comfort zone, see how other people and other places design, and then when you get comfortable again, travel, go again. See all that's out there and bring it back and store that inspiration for when you need it most.
And finally, the last lesson that I'm sharing tonight is the design truly is ever changing. The way we design now is entirely different than 50 years ago, 20 years ago, even 10 years ago when I was just starting out. And in five years and 10 years, it will all be different again. But that's a good thing. This industry, it changes rapidly. And I believe will start to change even faster now due to so many issues on the horizon, like climate change, sustainability, and population growth. The world is changing and so is our built environment. So must we as designers. Our designs must meet a rapidly changing brief, creating spaces and things that meet new challenges and must offer new solutions for very real world issues. As an example of this, my design work in Hawaii has offered a very real glimpse into some of the problems the world is facing. Climate change is showing itself even more in Hawaii than in many other places in the world. Waikiki Beach, which I'm sure many of you know of or have visited, is predicted by scientists to be gone in 15 to 20 years. 15 years. That stretch of beach is not only beautiful and iconic, but it's also home to dozens of large hotels, and restaurants and shops that provide a vital influx of income for Hawaii's tourist economy. When that beach is gone, what happens to all those shop owners and restaurants full of people? What happens to the massive relocation of dozens of hotels and an enormous part of the income that Hawaii relies on from tourists every year? That's just one real situation that is facing Hawaii right now and so many other places around the globe. And what does that have to do with us as designers, as creatives? Well, we're the ones who are going to be coming up with solutions for these crises. We're the ones that will be seeing this firsthand in our states and our cities. As creatives, we'll be looked to for solutions. We as designers must be looking to the future. We have to understand that the world is changing and in turn, our designs have to change. Our outlooks have to change. And sometimes the way we design, the way we create has to change. But instead of looking at that as a negative, I hope you leave here today looking at that as a positive, as an opportunity to grow and learn and excel. Just as being collaborative or inclusive or open to the possibilities for your career I hope as designers that you go forward excited for what's to come. I won't tell you that there won't be long sleepless nights when you're on deadline and that there won't be people telling you no along the way because there will be. I won't tell you that you'll always be the best designer in the room or that everyone will always love what you create because that won't be the case. But if you love creating and you believe in design, the road ahead will be the best choice you make. I've met a lot of different creatives in my life, people on all different journeys in all different sorts of fields. But one thing that always stands out to me is how passionate they are. As creatives, that passion is the one thing that makes us different. It pushes us and it drives us. As creatives, there is so much on the horizon for us to look forward to. As you go forward, I wish you the very best of luck in your future careers. If you'd ever like to connect with me, I've left my Instagram and website information here. Thank you so much for having me and best of luck.